Take a look at this box. Nothing too special, right? 40K vehicle. But when I turn it sideways, <laughs> it's so thick. That's what she said. This is the Baneblade tank, one of the biggest vehicles Games Workshop makes. This is actually not my model. This is Sean's Baneblade, and he's interested in all seven of the different variations that come in this box. And I am always up for a challenge, so I wanna see if I can put so many magnets in this thing that that actually becomes possible. And it is going to be so magnetic that if this thing ever goes through a metal detector, TSA is gonna have to call on the bomb squad. This one singular model has more sprues than a 40K army start collecting box. It is a hilariously huge model and a surprisingly old one hailing from 2007. And inside of this one box, you could build a Bane Blade, a Hell Hammer, a Storm Sword, a Shadow Sword, a Bane Sword, a Doom Hammer, a Bane Hammer, or a Storm Lord. All of those are somehow different models and make me wonder how anybody actually figured all this out. This is an intimidating amount of plastic. And honestly, building this thing is the easy part. The hard part is gonna be the magnetization. But it is always fun to experience brand new kit. And speaking of experiencing, this is quite a kit. One half of one track is almost the same size as a Space Marine Impulsor, and both halves cover it up completely. I was getting a little nervous because of how clever these parts are, using a lot of peg and socket and spacer pieces, but I was very pleasantly surprised. It all worked together really well, and most of the parts have corresponding instruction numbers printed into the plastic, so I can cut out the parts and still identify them while they're on my desk. Dang, this is a big kit. And I am super nervous about gluing anything at this point because man, could I get myself into a pickle. I don't know if anyone else will think this is cool, but this particular sprue is completely unique in the history of Warhammer 40K. Every sprue I've ever seen from Games Workshop comes out of a two piece mold. You got a top and a bottom, but this one particular sprue was made with a four piece mold, a top, a bottom, a left and a right. You get details on the sides that way, and so every single one of these weapons has essentially pre-drilled barrels. And that is fantastic. They're perfectly centered, they're perfectly aligned. I assume that it's much more expensive to make a four-piece mold, and that's why they've never ever done it before or since. But man, does it make this a schnazzy kit. And speaking of how schnazzy this kit is, it is time to start wrapping my head around how I'm gonna magnetize this. I analyzed the instructions, figuring out exactly which parts were shared between which versions. I'm not gonna be able to remember all of these ridiculous names, but I can at least figure out what can be glued down and what I have to leave alone to be magnetized. Each sponson is made up of 19 pieces, and there are four of these, with last cannons in either twin bolters or twin heavy flamers, all with functional rotating parts. I got everything prepped and ready. This sucker is about 1.25 guns per square inch and honestly has more firepower than the new Primaris Repulsor Executioner. It took about seven hours to get this guy all cut, cleaned, and ready for magnetization. And in that time, I have developed a fear for this model. This truly is an entire army in one model. It has a demolisher cannon just for fun, just as one of its guns. And the Demolisher Cannon will one-shot most things in the game. Its Bane Blade Cannon is even better. And as if that wasn't enough, almost 20 Bolter shots. It's got four Laz Cannons. I can't imagine anything being able to withstand this thing shooting at it. I think the only reason it's not considered a particularly competitive choice in game is because it's physically too large to fit on a board at almost eight inches wide. And it's a very complicated kit, and it's gonna be very difficult to magnetize, but that shouldn't be a problem with today's sponsor, the Magnet Baron. You know them, you love them. The Magnet Baron is the number one stop for all things magnets. Whether you want to make your models easier to transport, extra poseable, or save some money getting all the weapon options that come in the box, the Magnet Baron has you covered. Their magnets are all high quality and come in all the sizes us wargamers need, whether it's tiny little magnets to gently hold infantry weapons or big honkin' vehicle magnets, the Baron has them all. And what sets the Magnet Baron apart is they also carry all the tools and supplies you need to get your magnetization projects finished. They carry high quality drill bits perfectly sized to work with magnets, making the process a breeze. And these drill bits are super sharp. I have bought a lot of small drill bit sets and they are always either broken or dull. Magnet Baron bits blast through plastic and resin and they have high quality pin vices and magnicators to make drilling and checking the polarity of your magnets a breeze. And when it comes to glue, they have it all. Insta-set, anti-clouding, quick drying, it really is a one-stop shop. 
The next time you are looking to pick up some magnets for your miniatures, or you have a particularly tricky project coming up, give the Magnet Baron a try. I have the Baron's Bane Blade magnetization kit, and now it's just a matter of simply sinking pff, about 50 magnets into this thing. I cracked open the magnet pack and got started. First things first, probably the most challenging magnetization job of all, these sponsons. The engineering in these are very specific, and I have to recreate this with magnets instead of the Games Workshop pegs. I drilled out the hole in the middle and inserted a 3mm magnet. 3mm is my go-to size. It's small enough to fit in most places, and it holds really nice and strong. And this will have to be my only magnet mounting point, so polarity will be very important, with each pair of guns needing a positive and negative polarity. Five magnets in each sponson to get every possible weapon option available, but in the end it worked like a charm. And the kit has still got full functionality. I love the poseability that magnetization offers because it's so much fun to just sit here and wiggle the little sponson guns around. <sighs> but enough of the little add-on weapons, it is time to figure out how to make all three of these chassis fit on here. The Bane Blade has a very specific front and top piece, and the other variants use the big old head that is either sitting in the front or the back of the tank. And this little spacer needs to be able to move around too. I'm going to tackle the front first. This piece needs to sit here. Games Workshop has already made a little shelf for it to sit on. I took some of the metal from the Magnet Baron's kit and glued it underneath. Games Workshop's shelf is 2mm thick, so I'll be able to hide a 2mm magnet inside of this. After the super glue was dry, I scratched up the plastic surface and used some UV cure resin to strengthen these shelves. Then I glued the magnets onto the plate and used UV resin on these magnets as well. Slapping this sucker into place and it is really strong. Now for the hard part, the Bane Blade's big ol' head. The big head overlaps the tracks and so this is where I can hide some magnets. I traced out the shape and then glued a magnet to the underside of the track. I used the biggest magnet I could find because there's going to have to be a decent gap in between these magnets. On the top, I need to make a shelf for the magnets to live on. I cut a strip of plastic card and glued this on the inside. This connection isn't amazingly strong, but I reinforced it with some UV Cure resin. Now it might seem like it's going to be impossible to get these magnets in there, but they're so strong I can just pour some super glue and drop the magnet and it'll find the perfect spot all by itself. Boom! It's starting to really look like something. Now the Bane Blade components are done, it's time to tackle the other variants. The hardest part will be getting this head to sit in the spots I need it to. For the head back position, I can reuse the magnets from the Bane Blade, and I put extra magnets for the head forward position and cover them all in UV Cure resin to make sure that they never fall out. Then I made some more metal shelves for the back section of the tank. Now this is a real challenge. This spacer needs to be able to flip 180 degrees between the two different variants. And it is too thin to get magnets in there, so I cut up some sprue. I set the spacer into place and glued down some sprue, and now I have all the parts in there to have all three variants ready at a moment's notice. With the different body layouts all done, it is now looking like a functional tank, and I'm very proud of this magnetization job. Nothing coming off if I shake it upside down, and I can even pick it up by the magnetized turrets. Now it's time to work on all of the guns. All the things that stick into this hole make five different variants of the Bane Blade. From stubby gun, to short and thick gun, to long gun, to ever so slightly longer gun. I need to find the smallest number of magnets to make all of these options available. I put a big honkin' magnet inside the main gun assembly, using resin to lock it in there. Now to cut off this peg. I scraped up the back of the tank, slid the gun into place, and then let two more monster magnets set themselves up behind the main turret. For the Gatling Cannon, I need to avoid these big magnets, so I put a smaller 3mm magnet in the top of the gun, and I used a drop of blue paint to find where the magnet needs to meet on the other side. This piece slots into place pretty snugly, so the small magnet is plenty strong enough. Now for the other guns. Luckily these were as simple as slipping a magnet that would fit into the holes. And with that, more than half the Bane Blades are done. Now it's time for the actual Bane Blade and Bane Sword. They have different turret guns, and these are very straightforward magnet connections. Drilling a hole in the middle of each peg and inserting the largest magnet I could get away with, and then putting the corresponding magnet in the barrel of the guns. Keeping the pins intact is great. It means that the magnet can be ever so slightly off and the gun will still line up properly. And speaking of guns, as if this tank didn't already have enough guns, let's just slap an auto cannon right next to the battle cannon for good measure. Then a heavy stubber on top, just in case the 15 heavy bolter shots don't finish off a squad. And speaking of stubbers. The Stormlord variant has two more heavy stubbers in the back, and these are too small to fit magnets inside of them. These pressure fit pretty well, so I used some small pieces of plastic card to add more pinch points so that they're held captive. And speaking of being held captive, I love these rabbit ear antenna. And they also happen to look exactly like Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber from The Phantom Menace. 
These ears will for sure get snapped off from handling. A magnet might just be the thing to save them though. I rounded off the square pegs these slot into so they're not held quite so snugly and then made room for some magnets. Now these rabbit ears are held on there, but if anything runs into them, Sean, they will just fall off instead of snapping. Every single weapon option and upgrade is now available to this unit through the power of magnets, and it's pretty rad. Almost as rad as the STL sets on our Patreon. Over there, we have a new STL pack every month. This month, we have the Shipping Hub, a humongous set of terrain with features like the giant crane, functional shipping containers, elevators, and stairs. This guy is pretty much done, but there's a couple of little things I would like to do before I hand this sucker off to Sean. Also, I am sure that Sean is gonna be reading every single comment on this video, so please leave a comment below asking Sean, is the Bane Blade painted yet? This tank has a spot for a tank commander, and one actually comes in the box. Now, unfortunately, there's only one set of arms, so you need to decide if you are going to go on foot or riding in the tank, or both through the power of magnets. I cut the body off the standing one and the legs off the sitting one and cleaned up the waist and then glued him together. With the magnets in place, he's ready to rock both in and out of the tank. Now, I'm not painting the Bane Blade for Sean, but I think I will paint this guy because I have a fun idea. I started with a good old fashioned Zenithal Prime and used Army Painter Speed Paint to quickly set down some base coats. I highlighted his shoulders with blue and his clothing with a light gray and then white paint, making his officer's uniform look nice and crispy. Then a rattling grime wash over his gun, which I gave some hazard stripes with a little light gray, a yellow wash and some Fugan Orange from Games Workshop to make it nice and saturated. I used some gold to make him look fancier and I painted his power sword a nice glowing blue. How often is he gonna be swinging that power sword 30 feet up in the air inside of a Bane Blade? Who knows? All he knows is he's just important enough to get the Imperium's version of a lightsaber. I painted his face and dotted his glowing red eye and then I was ready for my fun idea. I know he's wearing a trench coat, but to me it looks like a skirt, perhaps a kilt. I painted him green from the waist down and made stripes of red running all the way around and then making columns of red to get that tartan pattern started. I painted lines of black in the middle of each red stripe and lines of yellow right in the middle of each green stripe. And now it's looking like a proper kilt. The only thing left is to shade it with a little null oil. He's ready to work on foot, but I need to get a magnet ready for him to ride in the Bane Blade. I filled in the hole with some plastic card and I needed to give him a little magnet booster so that he properly peeks out of the top. Tank Commander in a kilt. That's the danger of leaving models with me. I might paint them, but I might make a few executive decisions. And speaking of executive decisions, there's one more little surprise I would like to leave for Sean before I finish this tank. The Bane Blade is so big that most of the magnetized pieces will fit inside the belly of the beast. And this belly is flat, giving me plenty of room for artistic expression, hidden amongst the plastic odds and ends. I'm hoping there's enough bits in there that the floor always remains concealed and it takes a good long time for Sean to find that hidden dicky. But now it's time to play one of my favorite games. Guess that Bane Blade variant. That's not a Bane Blade, it's a Hellhammer. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That's no Swarm Lord, it's a Storm Lord. Now let's get the easy ones out of the way. What's this? That's right, it's a Bane Hammer. The Doom Hammer has half an inch more barrel. Now let's get the swords out of the way. Guess which sword this is. If you guessed Shadow Sword, then you'd be wrong. It's a Bane Sword. The Shadow Sword has half an inch more barrel. And who could forget the infinitely different Storm Sword. And to wrap this up, the tank that'll be taken 90% of the time because it's objectively better, the box's namesake, the Bane Blade.